Hello, I'm Madison Virgilio, and I'm from the Raleigh branch of the Memphis Public Libraries. Today, I want to discuss the basics of an effective and creative journaling system that can transform the way you organize your schedule and increase your overall productivity. It's called bullet journaling, or Bujo, and it's a lot of fun. If you're currently working from home like I am, this is a great practice to get into now while you have some extra time. Stick around for a full rundown of the system, including tutorials and resources to help you in creating your very own bullet journal. Okay, so one thing I want to establish right off the bat is that bullet journaling is a system that's widely used by creative people in all kinds of ways. It was developed with customization in mind, and that's why it works so well. You can use what works for you and just ditch the rest. For me, uh, bullet journaling has been an amazing creative outlet. I'm an overthinker, um, I'm a note taker, and I'm a doodler, but I'm also admittedly horribly unorganized. I started bullet journaling in my freshman year in college, and before that, my life was covered in sticky notes. Now, all my sticky notes live in one place, as entries in the bullet journal. I use all kinds of media, uh, pencils, pens, markers, fine liners, uh, watercolor, whatever I can get my hands on. I think of all kinds of themes, I change my style from week to week, and I do mess up. A lot. But that's the beauty of it. It's yours, and it's there to help you. So let's jump right into the basics of the bullet journaling system. The method itself was developed by Ryder Carroll, a Brooklyn-based digital product designer and art director. And basically, he created this method as a solution to a struggle most of us can relate to, and that is keeping track of everything. Juggling work, school, and personal responsibilities and the innumerable tasks associated with them. It can be overwhelming. So, writers sought to develop a system flexible enough to handle whatever he threw at it, and fast enough that it wouldn't get in the way. And that's exactly what bullet journaling is. It's an analog system that helps you track the past, organize the present, and plan for the future. You can also integrate components that will help you reflect on and improve healthy habits, such as recording your daily exercise minutes, or creating an illustrative spread that tracks the books you read. There's also a massive online community of social media users and bloggers that focus specifically on bullet journal inspiration, instruction, and ideas. Pinterest is my personal go-to, and there are more references than you can possibly imagine. The way that you create your bullet journal is totally up to you, and you can be as creative as you want to be, but one thing is certain. If you use this system consistently, it will force you to be accountable in ways that will improve your overall productivity, focus, and time management. So, because this is a system, there are a few guidelines. Now, we're going to avoid any terminology that suggests you follow any kind of rules, because again, this is your bullet journal. So, these are just some guidelines, and I'm sharing them to help give you a little direction as you get started. So first, let's discuss what is referred to as the language of bullet journaling. It's called rapid logging, and it's a great way of capturing information as bulleted lists. Be it for note-taking or journaling, many studies identify the benefits of writing by hand. That said, it takes time and it can be unorganized. So rapid logging allows us to enjoy the benefits of handwriting while avoiding the shortcomings. So think about it like this. We've all hastily scribbled important information on the back of a crumpled receipt, stuffed it in a back pocket, and lost it to the void. So rapid logging gives every task and note a place on a symbol, so you can find the information you need right when you need it. So now, let's go over some relevant terminology. If rapid logging is the language that bullet journal is written in, then bullets are the syntax. Bullets are short form sentences paired with symbols that visually categorize your entries into tasks, events, or notes. So let's talk a little bit about each of these elements. Tasks are represented by a simple dot. Uh, the official bullet journal method suggests using a dot instead of a check checkbox because it's fast, clean, and can be easily transformed to reflect the state of the task. However, I'd argue that a checkbox, an unfilled circle, a heart, a star, or a tiny fluffy kitten face serves the very same purpose. Uh, use anything that you can fill in later when the task is complete and you're good. So tasks can have one of four states, 
Events, which are represented by the open circle bullet, uh, events are date related entries that can either be scheduled or logged after they occur. Our experiences can be complicated and distracting. So rather than trying to capture the way you feel in the moment, keep your event entries short and objective. That will only increase the odds of you actually writing them down. The important thing is to have a record of your experience so that you can learn from it. Now, on to notes. Uh, notes are represented with a dash. Notes include the many facts, ideas, thoughts, and observations that you have throughout the day. They're used to capture information or data that you don't want to forget. This bullet works well for meeting, lecture, or classroom notes, and it's ideal for nesting information. So nesting bullets, uh, they can add some much needed color to your entries. Um, this is where you bust out those sparkly gel pens. Um, for example, you can nest notes under an event to capture the important details, um, or nest subtasks under the main task to break things down into a series of steps. And definitely do it in lime green if you're feeling lime green. Um, and be sure to use signifiers. Uh, the idea here is that we want to readily, readily find the information we're looking for. Signifiers are symbols that give your ent entries additional context at a glance. So to place to the left of the bullet so they stick out, making them easy to spot when scanning your pages. I like to follow the bullet journal method so like suggestion here. Um, I use an asterisk for uh, priority and an exclamation point to signify inspiration and ideas. But feel free to come up with your own. Um, this is all adaptable, as is everything in the bullet journal method. So that is a quick rundown of the bullet journal language. And remember, these are just guidelines. You should combine, mix, and match these elements to create a system that works for you. Tasks, events, and notes will help you quickly capture your thoughts as they bubble up throughout the day. And you can log them however you want, as long as it's cohesive, consistent, and clear. Don't worry about logging them in any particular order because the important thing is just to get them out of your head and onto the page. All right, so now we've got the language down. Let's go ahead and discuss some of the major sectional components of the bullet journal. The next few slides will show you how to set up your bullet journal with structure and organization in mind. Your index, for example, will act as your bullet journal's table of contents. The index lives at the front of your notebook and it serves to locate content in your bullet journal. Simply add the topics of your collections and the page numbers to the index so you can quickly find them later. Most of my collections are titled by the month or the week that they pertain to, uh, but you can create all kinds of collections. Some examples are chemistry notes on pages 40 through 60, um, workout routine on pages 5 and 6, and uh, recipes on pages 15 through 30. All right, so the first major collection listed in your index should be your future log. Uh, this collection is used to store data to entries that will occur outside of the current month. Um, this includes both long-term and short-term goals. Plan your uh, future log for the next six months to a year. Anything beyond that can be overwhelming and you may never achieve all of your goals at the same time. Life happens and things that we can't control come up. Uh, so six months to a year is a good manageable time frame. Compartmentalize your tasks and try to reserve your future log for goals that you can actively work towards over time. Immediate tasks and goals belong in your weekly or monthly spreads. Everything we task ourselves with is a potential experience. The future log serves as your time machine, allowing you to glimpse the outlines of the future you're actively working towards. Progress is so much easier to gauge when the evidence is right in front of you. Um, a good tip here is each month, review your future log and see if anything is ready to be migrated into the new monthly log. Okay, so the monthly log is a spread of facing pages that consists of a calendar and a task page. Uh, at the end of each month, you'll do a spread for the upcoming month. You can play with themes and illustrations here. Uh, for example, it's April now. I'll start May spread around the 20th or so because I'm planning a full floral theme spread with all kinds of May flowers. Um, don't worry, I'll show you guys a few ideas for inspiration in the upcoming slides. Um, my suggestion here is uh, go with simple spreads that get the job done when you're first starting out. As you develop your own spin on the system, you can integrate more elements that are important to you and require monthly consistency. And as you progress, your spreads can and will become more elaborate and artistic. Right now, though, let's just focus on function.
All right, so the monthly log consists of two equally important components. The calendar page for things with an associated specific date um, and the task page for things that you need to get done before the month ends. The calendar page, um, this is a minimal calendar and it's designed to prevent a bird's eye view of the month. You can use it to schedule events and tasks, record events after they happen, or both. Entries here should be as short as possible, um, as this page is designed for reference only. This is where you record things like due dates, uh, work schedules, deadlines, and appointments. And then uh, we have the task page. The task page is designed to help you take a monthly mental inventory. What are the priorities this month? What remains undone from last month? What matters now? Get it off your mind and list it here. All your monthly chores, creative projects, reminders, and recurring tasks, those go here. A tip here, um, leave some room in the left margin of the page to add signifiers to mark your important entries. Signifiers, as we discussed before, um, are asterisks, exclamation marks, or any other symbol that denote importance or priority. Okay, now let's move on to some inspiration. Okay, so I absolutely love this one. Um, this sort of scrapbook mixed media style is one that I try to emulate myself a lot in my monthly spreads. Um, so you've got the, the major functional components, both the calendar and the tasks. So the tasks are broken into categories that reflect this person's monthly objectives. Uh, the circle of gratitude is a unique play on a list that many people incorporate into their monthly logs. Um, a lot of people just record the things that they're most grateful for in the month. Um, and I do this when I'm feeling uninspired, stuck, or stressed. Uh, having a visual representation of all the good in my life can be incredibly impactful when I feel like things are not going my way. Um, this person also has individual lists for monthly goals and victories. This is a great way to stay consistent and present um, while, while also acknowledging and applauding yourself for taking care of business. All right, so aside from the functional elements, uh, the spread is also really visually appealing. Um, I chose this example because it really exemplifies what doodles can do for your pages. This person has taken um, a very simple approach using collected mixed media uh, and simple art supplies, but it looks elegant and professional. I don't know about you guys, but I always hold on to pretty packaging, postcards, letters, and, and little notebook doodles. Um, this is their time to shine. <laughs> I search for patterns everywhere. I keep craft scissors in my bag, um, and I search for inspiration in all the scraps, trash, and waste that I create. Uh, your bullet journal can become a home for anything that calls to you. Moving on to another uh, example. This spread, uh, while still really colorful and beautifully designed, is much more goal-oriented. Um, one thing I want to highlight here is that the paper um, is gridded paper, which obviously helps to create these really um, beautiful uniform sections. Um, here we've still got the two major components, uh, but this person has incorporated habit trackers, to-do lists, monthly tasks, notes, goals, and important dates. Um, this kind of spread works really well for people who need to compartmentalize their tasks to stay productive. I love all of these individual lists because they really do work well together to give you a full bird's eye view of the entire month, and you can see all of your responsibilities in all facets of your life. In my own experience, um, when I was in college, I worked full time and I took classes full time, so I was always busy. And I realized very early on in that experience just how stressful it could be to keep track of everything in these two equally important parts of my life. I kept school to do lists and work to do lists each week and each month, and it's amazing how much my productivity and consistency increased when I learned to compartmentalize my responsibilities. I learned just how much time to allocate to specific tasks how to prioritize my goals, and how to focus on what was right in front of me. Okay, so that was the monthly. Now let's talk about weekly spreads. The official bullet journal method refers to these as daily logs because this is where we record our daily tasks, but they're actually designed to project the week ahead. So most people in the bullet journaling community refer to these as weekly spreads or weekly logs. So for the sake of clarity, that's the terminology that I'm gonna be using. Anyway, 
Weekly spreads contain your daily calendars, which come together on one page to project your responsibilities and goals for the week ahead. The weekly spread is designed for day-to-day -day use, so use it. Use the full two pages for each spread and create the outline for your daily sections. This is where you'll record your daily reminders, to-dos, chores, and deadlines. A good tip here uh, is to set up your weekly log ahead of time. So your theme, heading, layout, and doodles, but not your daily entries. Create them as you go or the night before, when you're close enough to tomorrow to know exactly what it entails. Give yourself space for your daily entries and make your layout flexible. You never know how much room you'll need on any given day. You can always go back and make it look beautiful later, but remember that functionality is the focus here. All right, now let's look at some examples so we can contextualize all of this. This one is straightforward and simple, but still captures that curated scrapbook feel with the doodles and the mixed media. Uh, notice the amount of space that this person has left for each day's tasks. They don't have to fill the space, but it's there if they need it. Um, everything looks consistent and clean, and this spread really effectively projects the upcoming week at a glance. All right, so here's another example. Um, I really love this one. Uh, this person designed this spread with a really creative theme in mind. It's relatively simple, but it's symbolic, it's eye-catching, and I bet this person had a lot of fun creating this spread. Again, here we have plenty of space underneath each day to account for anything this week may throw at us. All right, so now that we've covered each of the integral elements of the bullet journal method, let's quickly touch on some extras. So extras are spreads that you create to capture, record, and track specific parts of your life. Some of the most popular extras are habit trackers. And habit trackers allow you to visually see the progress of staying consistent with your goals. Things you want to remember to do every single day go in your habit tracker, like taking your vitamins or drinking a certain amount of water. And uh, fitness and health trackers are also super popular. Um, these are both extremely effective in creating a routine and tracking the progress towards your personal health goals. Extras can also include things like shopping lists, checklists, and other goal-oriented lists like books to read or movies to watch. Um, I love this little books to read list here. You can track the titles you've read and color in each one once you've completed it. So this is a really great way to transform your boring lists into ongoing creative projects. All right, guys, that is the gist of the bullet journaling method and its main components. Now, it's your job to put it all together and make it work for you. Bullet journaling can be creative, immersive, and effective in so many ways, but like most things that are good for you, consistency is the key to success. Accountability leads to productivity, and having everything in front of you gives you a full picture of what really needs to be done. Plus, it's really gratifying to look back at a physical record of all the progress you've made. At the end of each month, create a new monthly spread, and go ahead and lay out your weekly spreads as well. Add new tasks, events, and responsibilities where you can, and leave space for the craziness of the upcoming weeks. Then, review last month. Make sure you've crossed off all completed tasks, fill in any gaps, and take a look at any unfinished tasks. If you determine that they're still worth your time, go ahead and record them in this month's spread. Try to keep this routine and catch up when you miss a week. So you officially have everything you need to get started. Now you get to look for inspiration. Some of my favorite resources for bullet journaling are Pinterest and Instagram. Search keywords on Pinterest and tags on Instagram, and you'll find more reference material than you know what to do with. Bullet journaling blogs are also great resources, though they typically only showcase one individual's work. Some of my go-tos are Tiny Ray of Sunshine, Little Coffee Fox, Minimal Plan, and Compass and Ink. And of course, you can always reference bulletjournal.com for more information on the official bullet journaling method. Thank you all so much for starting here with Memphis Public Libraries. Hope you learned a few things today, and I wish you all the best in your bullet journaling journey. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content for all ages.